And she wanted to protect his best interest because she knew the law. She knew how it was supposed to be and everything that he was discussing with my aunt and explaining and describing was completely out of the ordinary and completely... And they were given the wrong answers. For legal okay, so she so said, I'll be out here. Who was uh, uh, coming down with an illness at the time. She yeah. actually died a few weeks after... Three weeks and after. she was going to sit out while he was doing his deposition and read a book for all them hours to protect him. I noticed in the court record, uh, you, your aunt said something like... Uh, Operation Greylord, which is where some of the local judges went to jail. But yeah, well, that's what she said to Lisa King, that she says, watch out for your own peers. Who is this Lisa King? Lisa King was the second, attor uh, second attorney that came into view here. You, you had a bunch of musical chairs, one lawyer after another. Exactly, they're all crooked. Well, well, or, well, what happened with these lawyers? They chickened out what? You no, know, well, well, in essence, what happened with my aunt is she saw the little game they were playing. Let's go meet in the judge's chambers. Let's get up and go to the bathroom, all of us together. So she looked at the attorney, Lisa Kane, and she says, if you don't stop playing games and represent my brother-in-law the right way, remember, Great Lord, I will be making yeah. sure that I put you in that same situation and you will fall. She was be looking for bugs underneath the uh, table and stuff like idiots. You your, know. your aunt was... A, a undercover agent with the FBI assigned to Treasury Correct. forgery cases and Correct. all kind of stuff like that. And, and what did what did the federal judge Ann Williams do to your aunt? She sent a was it a subpoena? No, no, no. this 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 the we got document here. Her. She sent to her place of work. The Treasury uh, Department. Let's focus in on the uh, on the document. She requested that she come to her chambers immediately over a withdrawal of an attorney that yeah, she Yeah, I noticed what it says there. I hope they could read some of the words. At the top, we got the envelope that came in. Next to it, we got her badge and, and her, uh, her business card. And below that, we got Judge, Federal District Judge Ann Williams' order. She's ordering that Mary Ann Strama, your aunt, yes. U.S. Treasury Department, 55 West Monroe, is ordered to be in court. That's right. She's not, your aunt was not a party to the case or a witness. No, they were angry that she was sticking her nose and watching what was, what was going on. They don't want people to do that. They she was intimidating Lisa mm -hmm. King. Okay, but wait a minute. In their opinion, by her For presence. some reason, your aunt confided more in you than in her sister. Maybe she liked you probably as a niece. What, what, did, what, did, your, what did your aunt tell you? She told me that this was a ridiculous case. And she never seen anything like it in all the years she's investigated case. It was a clown act. It was completely a clown act. No, and that's a professional. No, your, father, your father was going to be the, the victim of a fix. It wasn't probably. She was, she was definite that that was in. And the judge, Ann Williams, was in on it as well. And I believe that is why she was summoned to see Ann, uh, Ann Williams and her. She was going to intimidate her on her job is what she was going to do. What else would you be doing? Yeah, no, she... You see the envelope there, they sent it to your aunt, U.S. Treasury Department on Monroe Street. Yes. Where, she, where your aunt is an FBI agent, was assigned to Treasury Department investigations. Yes. She withdrew from the case because of what Mary Ann said to her. Mary Ann scared her with the gray word, and she thought... So that was, your aunt wouldn't sit by the door anymore and, and sort of... Uh, no, she let them know that she's going to watch them, and they better watch what they're doing. Yeah. And so, they said, well, she's out to handle the case this way. And so, yes. well, what do you think, from what you, you're the one that your aunt confided in as a niece, uh, well, what is something, in other words, your aunt was trying to find an answer to this through, through she channels? She said that she was going to contact some of her superiors and some of her peers and see what she can get about an investigation going on this. Because she was talking as a different department. Unprofessional, very unprofessional. What's interesting about this judge is uh, she relates, Judge Ann Williams relates to something that we've talked about again and again on this program. So I'll remind the viewers just briefly. Uh, a bankruptcy auctioneer and a known gangster went and bought a piece of property belonging to Joseph Andresetti. Instead of auctioning off, they bought it, see? And uh, the auctioneer was murdered. And this known gangster, Robert Baravia, gets hustled into jail. And who had the case? And we got into the middle of the case to point out to the judge, hey, hey, there's something crooked here. Robert Bellavia, the same Judge Ann Williams. You know, there's only uh, less than two dozen federal district judges, and let's face it, our program knows a lot about these crooked judges. I, I you know, I, I don't have any reason to, uh, to falsely accuse a judge, but this is one judge I've never accused of being honest. I mean, she's, you know. So you finally got a, a, a jury trial after all of this, and uh, any of you that are familiar with what happened at the jury trial. Well, first of all, this hotshot, 
from Hopkins and Sutter. Uh, let me just put in something about that. James Brennan? Yeah. yeah. A, a hot shot with your enemy, mm -hmm. golf club, right? right. He uh, is a senior partner with Hopkins and Sutter, mm -hmm. who is very much involved with Henry Hyde, who is very much involved with your enemy. You see how it, and, well, and what did he do during the trial? Mr. Brennan, what did he do? Well, I helped uh, Bob White. Acted very nervous, looking out in the corridor all the time. He sat like by the it, door? Yeah. Why was he sitting by the door? I looked out, I looked I like he was a lookout for something. Look That's what I, I was figured. Was he the gatekeeper for the court? I believe <laughs> sure so. Sure looked like it. Yeah. I really believe so. Well, look at my husband was suing the manager. He had all managers for jurors. Yeah, you listen to Like suing the right lawyer and having all lawyers. Yeah. Uh, first of all, uh, uh, there was no list in the courthouse that your case was there, right? No, no. no. If someone wanted to mind. find it, they couldn't. So if I heard about your case at that time, which I didn't, and I wanted to be there, what would happen, Kim? We couldn't find her. No, absolutely not. You would, you would think you know, the court case was not there. Jim, it wasn't on the docket either. Jim, the case was yeah, a, sort of an unlisted case. Right. Never got a piece of paper saying your case is so-and-so. Come to the certain courtroom or that. Never. There was a few students from John Marshall Law School there. Taking notes. I heard them taking notes. Well, uh, they're about to be learning learn from the master. They're about to be part of the system. You yeah. should have called that a mistrial the minute there was all managers sitting there. Uh, uh, you, 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 you've studied it the most as the life of the victim, <laughs> right? And he gets a receipt that's a poor copy, and he's, it, you're supposed to have an original. Yeah, let's go down the list of what happened at this. What, you call, what, what do you call this, what happened? A mock trial. They uh, put in their own jury from the secretarial pool, not from the jury pool. In fact, do you recognize uh, some of the people right there? Well, well, what, about, people. what about that, Jerry? Well, who'd you recognize among the jurors? I've seen the people around somewhere. I don't know where I... In some state or federal bureaucracy, right? Right, they had them coming down like 60 times just to walk around, tire them out, to keep coming downtown, you know? For no reason. Uh, what kind of people showed up to be chosen for the jury? All managers. Or uh, wives of managers. of managers. Managers. Were those the managers? Not your peers. No, no, not one of his peers. Okay. Uh, did somebody point this out to you? You, any of the family members? My dad happened to mention it. Uh, so we got my peers? Yeah, the courtroom looked like a courtroom that wasn't going to be used for today. There was an air conditioning in that courtroom. It was over 100 degrees outside for a week for the whole trial. What, did the judge allow this? Yes. And the microphone wasn't the working? The judge is going to sit in the sweltering heat in that black robe, will you? So what do you suppose it did to the jurors? It oh, warmed down. Well, most there them. were real jurors, not and they were in the secretarial pool, then it warmed down, and they didn't have to make any decision to get out of there. You wonder yourself, why would you put managers in there if they are phony jurors? Because they're not happy enough well, screwing you. Uh, they uh, want to humiliate you, too. Friends, what you have to understand, I, I don't want to keep interjecting, but Chicago was the only federal district in the United States where the bosses in the FBI select the pool from which you get the jurors. I gave my uh, papers to Davis. So in other words, they don't come with a blind man's buff, you know what I mean, picking, in other words, it's like picking from a box of oranges that the mm -hmm. FBI selected all the oranges. All I'd like right. to see that jury, the jury letters that went out to these particular people and the checks that went out to them, because they don't exist. My dad swears he recognizes these people from the Southern A couple, of, a couple of them. Down there. The lady with the big lips for that. Now, the key <laughs> thing that they wanted to use against you was this receipt for meat, 70 pounds of meat. Did they claim that you took it? Mm-hmm. Yeah. And, and what kind of a receipt was it? I couldn't make out the date on it. A bad copy, very yeah. bad copy. We had it blowing up, we still couldn't make it up. And, and what did the judge do with the bad copy? <laughs> oh, he says it looks like an eight to him. To him, it was the evidence. To him, it was Bobrick that was... Oh, oh that was... Well, that's another he thing. had the lackeys do it. Wait a minute, wait a minute. This is another thing that people don't understand. Instead of... Doing their own Williams things. hearing the case herself, she sends it to a junior judge called a magistrate. That's yeah. like they're lackey, you know what I'm saying? So I, I like your mother. She's right to the point. You know what I mean? She <laughs> yeah. Well, why should she even do any work? She has this guy do it. I mean, she's God. She's queen. All she needs is the crown. Yeah. This has worn everybody down. So, so, wait a minute. so the magistrate took it upon himself to read the copy that nobody else could read? It in front of everyone. It looks like a... Eight, eight to me. Eight to me, yeah. There was a zero, and you could see that. You know what's wrong with that? You can't cross-examine the judge. says, Judge, on what basis do you looking at this crappy copy here that nobody could read? How is it that you could read the numbers that nobody else could read it? And they could never find the original. What was happening in this trial? And they could never find the original. 
Listen, Claudia only said it, said it to the horse's mouth herself. She was one of the lawyers. Yes, she was my last lawyer. When I wanted to go for an appeal, I asked her, I said, I want to go for an appeal. And she says, what's the matter with you? You know that Judge Williams is biased. You know that Bobrick is biased. Now, what makes you think that you're going to take your appeal to the appellate court judges? You're just as biased as they are. Well, the corporations, they're not for you. In, in other words... I got a tape 